What you see is the title of my talk today, Entrepreneurs and the Evolution of Wealth, From Power to Passions to Purpose. But what you're seeing right now are works from the Mayo Clinic Art Collection, uh, both the Endangered Species and the Flower Series by Andy Warhol. And you'll recall this famous icon of art once said that everyone has 15 minutes of fame in their lifetime. And I am rather hoping this is not one third of mine. Because I was challenged by the concept of presenting a five to seven minute idea burst before a veritable pantheon of innovation deities. A daunting task indeed is in that I am not an expert on innovation. I neither teach, nor the theorize, coach, nor consult about it. But I never let a lack of knowledge and expertise interfere with the delivery of a talk. <laughs> For although not a skilled practitioner in innovation, I have been an avid observer of innovators in my 33 years in philanthropy. These are people who have changed our lives and are changing the lives of others. So perhaps I should state straight up front the essence of my talk regarding funding innovation and healthcare transformation. Entrepreneurs, one word. And those of you who are old enough in the, in the audience will know that Previous time someone said on television one word, it was plastics. But today, it's entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs have shaped this world and will reshape it in the years ahead, whether through, whether through philanthropy, social business, or through the establishment of innovative companies, some of which we've heard in our time together. We must therefore mine our organizations and our collective communities for these powerful exemplars and contagious messengers of vision in action. Now, recent research by the Bank of America and the Center on Philanthropy sought and discovered the most generous people in America. The bottom line is, that entrepreneurs give 20 to 40 times the amount of money in philanthropy than those who make their livings on salaries or through inheritance or who produce their wealth in any other way other than entrepreneurial. 20 to 40 times more generous. These agents of change in our times are creating a new landscape of innovation across a continuum of traditional philanthropy through new business venture. The question is, can moral acts of philanthropy be wed with free enterprise to create change that impacts the health and welfare of all? A place where entrepreneurs can both do well and do good. As Steve Case has said, too many people act as if the private sector and the public sector should operate on different axes, where one is about all about making money and the other is about all about serving society. This is what he describes as activities that are not only for profit. Now, Bill Gates said, the genius of capitalism lies in its ability to make self-interest serve the wider interest. There are two great forces of human nature, self-interest and caring for others. This new blended world of philanthropy and business is well worth watching. So in our short time together, let me posit that a healthy transformation may just be occurring among the wealthy in the world. It is perhaps an evolution of wealth from power to purpose from money used to build monuments to money bringing monumental change. You know, we often see money build monuments. 
And this will always be the case, where money purchases muscle, pure power. From serfs to slaves to armies both ancient and contemporary. Now, the Renaissance was perhaps the first time that capitalists brought competition even to the world of art and architecture. Medici families not only bought muscle through their armies, but also mines. Not, not only purchased power, but also passion and creativity. Muscle and mines the likes the world had never seen. Only entrepreneurs could dream up a competition pitting Leonardo da Vinci against Michelangelo, where two frescoes, two tabla rasas became the battlefield. And it was only entrepreneurs that challenged Michael, Michelangelo to create David from a block of marble repeatedly rejected by the best sculptors of the day. Now money has also notably purchased possessions and by their very ownership define the status of power. From art to horses to crown jewels to design and to luxurious forms of transportation, yachts, where you see these avid, rabid collectors through Gulfstream 550s. Now, a more recent example was the 1994 purchase of Leonardo da Vinci's Codex. This was his sketchbook of ideas, acquired by none other than Bill Gates for a mere $30.8 million. More recent, recently, the Medicis of the 19th and 20th centuries, the Carnegies, Rockefellers, and Fords left us libraries and concert halls, Rockefeller universities, and billion dollar foundations. Now today I contend that the powerful of our times may be creating new yardsticks to measure success, a trend where philanthropy may be the new status symbol. Money transferred into meaning. Power replaced by purpose. From the billion dollar initial challenge of Ted Turner to the United Nations through the stunning gifts of Bill and Melinda Gates, and then the reaffirming billions given by Warren Buffett to the Gates saying, the Gates make good decisions about philanthropy. Why reinvent the wheel? I've had fun making this money, and I hope and believe they will do good spending it. These remarkable gifts and the power of celebrities such as Bono and Oprah have made doing good the new, new thing, the new hopeful thing for our generation and generations to follow. If money is made in abundance, it should be shared as such and spent to solve today's most pressing problems. Now, since 2006, entrepreneurs have made 66 gifts of $100 million or more to nonprofit organizations to solve serious social problems. Might we see more Nobel Prizes for noble works like that of Vice President Gore? and his campaign against global warming, and Muhammad Yunus with his loans to the poorest of the poor. To me, it is encouraging to see that the hottest tickets in the world are not only to blockbuster concerts or to the Olympics, but also to Clinton's global initiative, to the Davos concert, to the TED Prizes for the X Prizes, and to the Aspen Institute, where ideas top ideology and passion for a purpose trumps power. So is there an evolution of money from the purchase of muscle and power to the inspiration of great minds creating enduring culture? Let us all hope so. Research on altruism finds groups who are more altruistic thrive over groups 
that do not share. Altruism becomes a trait necessary for survival. And I leave you today with functional MRIs of the brain, the mind of a person choosing to be generous, making a decision that is altruistic. Amazingly, when we're caught doing good and being generous, the part of the brain that lights up like a beacon is the pleasure center. Can generosity be the new drug of choice for philanthropy? Are we hardwired for acts of kindness? Well, there's so many takeaways from this conference. I hesitate to add a few more, but I'm going to suggest that you find the new Medicis of medicine, like those who have inspired us here. But you comport with innovators that you engage entrepreneurs. I believe there's truth to the social contagion theories. It does matter with whom you spend your time and your innovation energy. And as we consider yesterday's and today's discussions about innovations necessary to transform healthcare, may we be buoyed by the thought that good ideas may well be funded by great idealists, the innovators and entrepreneurs of a more equitable humane, and just future. Thank you.